Should you back Runar? Yes, but before I tell you why, my name is Sam, this is Should You Back It, and I'm here to help you crowdfund with confidence. Runar is a competitive, asymmetric game for one to four players where over the course of 60 to 90 minutes, each player will field a warband of three Viking heroes in the form of stunning miniatures and then guide them through the frozen wastes, earning victory points by defeating powerful enemies, retrieving valuable gems, completing various objectives and defeating opposing heroes. The core pledge for this game will cost you 99 euros or 86 pounds, along with a 20 euro shipping minimum if you live in the EU or USA, or a 22 euro minimum if you live here in the UK. And they estimate that this game will be shipping to backers in December of 2023, though I think it's more realistic to assume that it will be in your hands by Easter of 2024, as delays are pretty commonplace on Kickstarter. Speaking of which, before we take a deeper look at gameplay, Let's do a risk assessment on the company behind this game. You see, whenever we back something on Kickstarter or any crowdfunding platform, it's always important to do some research on the company behind it. See how their past projects went, see how they handled everything, just to get a sense of what our experience could be as a backer of their game. Runar is being developed by Ludus Magnus Studios. This is their 12th game on Kickstarter. Their most recent campaign, The Breach, finished in June of 2022 and is in the Pledge Manager stage. Black Rose Rebirth was funded in September of 2021 and is in preparation for mass production of some of the components of that game. The game before that, Nova Atas, which I think is how it's pronounced, is in mass production, but it is at this point delayed by a year, and it looks like it won't be shipping until mid-2023. I think part of the delay here and on Dungeonology and Divida Impera, which were the two campaigns they ran before that one, could be because we were all in COVID hell at that point and everything was pretty much delayed, but it hasn't stopped their backers feeling quite rightly annoyed. However, even with all of this, I believe we can give Ludus Magnus Studio an amber rating with regards to this risk assessment. Their games consistently rate well on Board Game Geek. However, their communication is inconsistent. While they may push out updates to backers once to twice a month in some cases, they are completely absent in the comments and replying to backers' concerns. Equally, a consistent concern that has been raised in a number of previous campaigns at this point is that they give the impression during their campaign that the game is further along in development than it actually is. I think if you back this game, you will get it, but I think you should strap in for the long haul in this one and expect long delays. If that isn't something you're willing to undertake, I would let this campaign pass you by. So let's talk about gameplay. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know I don't really get into the nitty gritty details of the gameplay, but instead give a little bit of an overview. Instead, if you want to see an in-depth look at the gameplay, I'm going to link you to a video in the top right of the screen here to where you can watch a short and succinct gameplay breakdown by the folks over on On Table Games. Uh, but let me give you some gameplay beats from the game that I really like. In Runar, you've got to use a bidding system to assemble your team of Vikings. You'll all have three tokens with one to three gem icons on them, and at the start of the game, when everyone is assembling their Viking team, a character card will be flipped for everyone to see, and then every player will place one of their tokens face down at that card. Whoever has the winning token, i.e. the one with the least gems on it, wins that character and adds them to your little warband. What balances this is that, say I want a character with my number one token, that token is then taken out of my bidding pool, so I'm not able to use it to win the next character, otherwise you'd be using the one token and everything. It encourages you as the player to really get tactical right from the outset and think about your play style so you can strategically bid in order to get the characters you need to carry out your grand plans. One of the other things I like is the gameplay variety. There's quite a few different layouts and setups I saw for this game in the previews, and this variety combined with the variety that you can have just in the makeup of your Viking Warband leads me to think that there's not only quite a bit of replayability to this game, but equally a nice amount of depth that will leave you with that feeling I love when you finish playing a game where you're sitting there, if you're me, you've probably lost, but it hits you, if I'd just done this on that turn with those guys, I might have won. And it's that feeling that gets you excited to get the game to the table again. For me, Runar is a game that seems poised to make you feel like that. 
This game is pricey though, especially if you're UK based like me and you'll have to add VAT on top of this, but it's important to remember that this game has minis in it, and quite a few of them at that, which always bloats the price of a board game, but the miniatures and components in general for Runar look stunning. If you're looking for a beautiful looking asymmetric competitive board game with some stunning minis and you're willing to overlook the delays you'll probably have in waiting for this game, I think Runar is worth your pledge. But this is my recommendation, hopefully you feel a bit more informed. If you found it helpful, I would love it if you could check out this video. YouTube thinks that you'll like it and by watching it you'd be really helping support me and my channel.